live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening and thanks for tuning in this evening. First tonight, hundreds of frustrated Tasmanian educators have taken their fight to locations across the state to protest for better working conditions. As fiery debate erupted in Parliament following the strike action, political parties were left divided on the way forward. Out of the classroom and onto the doorstep of decision makers, these tired teachers reached breaking point. What do we want? When do we want it? Now! While employed to shape the next generation, they want more support in the process, exposing the downfalls of the current state of the sector. Full-time library tech might earn forty to fifty thousand dollars a year, not the seventy-four thousand that is advertised on the government's job website. <laughs> Outside the schoolyard, the welfare concerns were echoed by Tasmanian parents who were backing in their children's educators. If it means that they'll get um, better pay and um, yeah, more attention for it, then I think it's worth it. I'm all for it. I think they deserve every, every cent they should get and should get more. Compared to the inconvenience for teachers, it was no inconvenience to me. But inside Parliament, the Education Minister wasn't as forgiving. This this uh, event this morning, um, to my view, uh, was unnecessary. I wonder the negotiations are going um, so well without you. Dominating discussion inside the chambers. Political opponents locked heads over the issue. That's what we want. Yeah, yeah, we want to provide yeah, yeah. our young people with the best well, possible opportunity. Well, where were you this morning? A job-ready generation. Yeah. Members of opposition parties stood alongside the crowd at this morning's protest. But no government ministers were in attendance. As the Premier remains adamant, he is committed to negotiations with the sector. Our educators in schools have shown today how serious and how angry they are with the current conditions they're being forced to work with in schools. Making a bold statement right across the state. Now ready for a chance to make real change. And if we don't change what's happening in schools at the moment, our students are the ones that are going to suffer. Grace Evans, 7, Tasmania News. Police are appealing for a man to hand himself in following a shooting involving officers near New Norfolk. 33-year-old Brighton man Robert George Gregg is still wanted in connection to Monday night's incident. Tasmania Police says it wants the situation resolved safely and as soon as possible. We just want to resolve the situation. We, we think that for him to communicate with us would be a good way to do that. We can do it in a safe, secure way. Members of the public are asked not to approach Mr Gregg and to call police immediately if they see him. And in a separate incident, police are searching central Hobart after a man escaped from the magistrate's court this afternoon. He's not considered a risk to the community. The state government is stepping in to help Tasmanians caught up in the Optus scandal, waiving the $11 fee required to replace their driver's licence and card number. Customers whose personal information has been compromised are also eligible for free replacement. The Department of State Growth now contacting Tasmanians who have already paid to offer reimbursement. We're just hours away from the fuel excise returning, adding further pressures to the cost of living for many Tasmanians. Reporter Mark Zeta joins us now. Mark, is it busy where you are? Yes, it is, Kim. Drivers across Tasmania are heading to service stations in a bid to snag cheap fuel ahead of the fuel excise returning. The average price of unleaded in Hobart is sitting at $1.72 per litre, while in Launceston it's $1.78. Those figures expected to skyrocket after tomorrow. While Federal Treasurer Jim Chalmers acknowledges the pressures families are going through right now, he says the government cannot afford an extension of the excise cut. Even to extend it for six months would cost the budget about $3 billion. There are substantial pressures already on the budget. We've still got around a trillion dollars in gross debt in the budget. Fortunately for drivers, there is still time to fill up your petrol tank. The excise won't return until midnight. Kim? Tasmania's economy is booming post-pandemic. That's according to new retail figures which show the sector has bounced back strongly. Trade jumped by 2.2% last month, the highest growth rate in the country, with the national increase in August at just 0.6%. 
A group of fed up northwest Tasmanians is threatening legal action to halt flood mitigation works at La Trobe. It claims the $15 million project will make future inundations more severe than the deadly event of 2016. Designed to protect La Trobe residents from another flooding disaster like 2016's devastating inundation, but local landowners say the planned mitigation works will spell disaster for their properties. Threatening legal action with demands the project stops work within 14 days. I'd just like to see council give it some factual consideration and understand what our argument is. Caravan park owner Gavin Imlach lived through 2016's floods. Among one of his guests then, a woman suffering a heart attack with no way for ambulance staff to access the property. Gavin had to drive her to safety himself. The 2016 flood was terrifying. Uh, I'm in a position here where the people that are occupying my park rely on me totally for their safety. So concerned, he's now built a model of what he believes will happen when the Mersey next breaks its banks, claiming the planned levee would overflow into his caravan park, turning the river basin into a bathtub. He wants a levee removed, allowing water to escape more easily onto the floodplain. The council is standing by its plans. The council has done extensive studies. We've worked with the insurer, who are the consulting arm of the hydro, and we are very confident that it will protect the bottom end of La Trobe Township from a flood event similar to what was experienced in 2016. La Trobe Council says it investigated removing the Frogmore Lane levy early in the process but ruled it out, saying it would cost $50 million. With legal action on the cards, the long-awaited project due for completion next year faces possible delays. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. Construction has started on Leiden Builder's third charity home, honouring the life of Madison Leiden. Money raised from this year's events will help a breakfast club program, ensuring children get a good start to the day. Keeping the memory of a much-loved Tasmanian woman alive. Madison would be so proud of this project. Um, it's a perfect way to honour her and her memory because she was so kind and giving in her nature. Lydon Builders now starting to build its third Madison House charity home. Madison Lydon was killed in 2018 after she was hit by a garbage truck while cycling in New York City. The houses are built in her honour and recognise Madison's willingness to help others. It's always so special to see where the money raised from these projects goes. The first charity house was built in 2019 and is constructed to meet the needs for children living with a disability and their families. This is all about giving back, uh, saying thank you and uh, congratulations and well done to Leiden Builders for uh, putting forward uh, this initiative. This year's home will raise $300,000 for Variety Tasmania School Breakfast Club, helping over 2,000 children be well fed before a full day of learning. We have been uh, able to grow it um, in, in so many different schools. As we speak today, the, this program is being run, or the Breakfast Club, is being run in five uh, primary schools in the south. Mark Zeta, 7 Tasmania News. The handwritten lyrics of a David Bowie pop classic will be heading to Tasmania. A piece of paper with the words of Starman was bought by the Museum of Old and New Art at auction for over £200,000. That's more than $300,000. The British singer died in New York in 2016. Launceston's Queen Victoria Museum and Art Gallery has marked an impressive milestone, uploading more than 100,000 Tasmanian zoological research records to a global platform. The data is from their National Sciences collection, each record providing researchers with accurate specimen and collection details. We've been digitising our um, botany collection for about four years now and we've uh, digitised about 6,000 out of about 20,000. The data is freely available on right, online from the Atlas of Living Australia. A huge confectionery company is changing the way it operates, now wrapping chocolate products in recyclable packaging. The initiative, a world first for Cadbury, as it strives towards sustainable manufacturing. It's a classic confection we all know and love and it just got a little sweeter. Cadbury's packaging now 30% recyclable. You'll see it on Cadbury Dairy Milk, Cara Milk, Old Gold and Old Gold Rum and Raisin. However, the recycled content is being used across our whole 
family block portfolio. With one line pumping out 528 chocolate bars each minute, it's a treat for consumers and the ecosystem. What we're doing at the moment is keeping 120 tonne of soft plastic out of landfill. Our dream is that we will get everybody putting their soft plastic wrappers into the curbside at the front of their homes. It'll be collected, it'll be chemically recycled and it'll come back into packaging. And while it may cost more to produce right now, Cadbury says it's an investment in our future. You've got to collect it, you've got to process it, but the more volume that starts to be generated, the more efficient it'll become and ultimately I think it will end up costing the same. The packaging featuring a QR code linking chocolate lovers to more information about the process. The company striving towards 100% recyclable wrapping. We can't do it today because there simply isn't enough recycled content. Australia actually doesn't even have a soft plastics collection system in place. Cadbury now encouraging other organisations to take the leap over to the green side. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. A Marion Bay restaurant has been crowned the best in Australia when it comes to destination dining. Van Bone took home the honour at last night's Gourmet Traveller Restaurant Awards in Sydney. We promise it's worth the trip. Congratulations, Tim and Laura. It's pretty amazing to be standing here in front of all of you. We're honestly thrilled. It's, it's an honour to be in this room. Hobart's Fico was named Tasmania's best restaurant. Good evening. The countdown is on until the Jack Jumpers begin their campaign for a successful second season in the NBL. With final preparations underway, the team has announced its fourth development player just days before the first tip off. Shooting hoops and shooting for the stars. The Jack Jumpers are fighting fit for their first game against the Phoenix. Everyone's going to give their all on the floor. Isaac White has been named the fourth development player following recent changes to the NBL rules and regulations. I've loved my time here. Um, I wouldn't want to be a part of any other group right now, so I'm really excited for the season. It's a great move. It's a rule that should have come in a long time ago. Making teamwork the dream work, final preparations were underway this morning at Kingborough Sports Centre with coach Scott Roth watching on. <laughs> Grueling training sessions focusing on discipline defence. We're in a good space. We had to tidy some stuff up from the Cairns and, and Adelaide game, but we saw things that we don't usually see and that's why we went there. We got it done. After a successful inaugural season, the Jackies are feeling confident they can do it all again. We've improved our processes daily, uh, we've changed our flows a little bit, we haven't rested on the results as our laurels and uh, we're really happy about that. We're excited for the year um, but we just don't want to let ourselves down and let, let the, the state down. The Ants will first defend the island this Saturday in Melbourne, marching on towards another chance at the championship. In cricket now, the Tasmanian Tigers are taking on South Australia in their opening Marsh One Day Cup. The Redbacks won the toss, opting to bat, with Henry Hunt bowled out first by Tasmania's Riley Meredith. Edge and taken, that's the great comeback. About time you'll be thinking, I've found the outside edge, I've beaten the bat a few times. Pretty well bowled, but Henry Hunt was going after it. At the end of the South Australian innings, the Redbacks were all out for 220 in the 44th over. The best of the bowling for the Tigers was Tom Rogers with five wickets for 32 runs from his 10 overs. Good evening. I'm still a bit tender. I uh, hope I can get through this this evening. Hobart reached 16 degrees today. Launceston now warmest with 21. Burnie 19 and Devonport 17 degrees. Above average temperatures right over the central and north after Ross recorded our low of 1. Ooze had 19 as the top today. Low Head and Flinders Island 18. Friendly Beaches 17. St Helens and Grove 16. King Island, Liaweenie and Strawn 14 degrees. Overcast skies over the south and east of the state today with just partly cloudy skies elsewhere. And not much rain to talk about either. Here's some cloud with embedded thunderstorms over most of Queensland and the far north of the Territory. Plenty of rain over that area. Another patch over the central WA coast and some low clover over New South Wales and parts of Victoria. Tomorrow the low sits off the New South Wales coast. A trough near Perth reaches the top end. A high is over the bite with another to our southwest. The winds east to southeast at 20 to 30 knots reaching 30 to 35 knots over the east and west with swells to 3 metres. We have a strong wind warning stretching from Low Rocky Point all the way around to Tasman Island. Into tomorrow we go and a showery 12 for Hobart, just 11 for Signet and 12 the high for New Norfolk. How things change quickly. 16 for Launceston with a shower or two. Showers easing from Devonport and 12 the high for Campbelltown. 
Burnie expecting a shower or two as well. 14 the top, 17 for Strawn, a shower possibly, and a shower for Smith and 15 the high. And to the east we go, showery conditions for St Helens with 14, 12 for Swansea and a high of 13 in Fingal. On Friday, light showers over the east and northwest, morning frost patches and possibly some snow to 800 metres. Another frosty start on Saturday morning, but mostly fine and partly cloudy across the state. And on Sunday, mainly fine apart from showers over the west and far south. A sunny 29 in Perth tomorrow, cooler and cloudy in Adelaide and Melbourne, showers over Canberra and Sydney, a mostly sunny warm day in Brisbane, 26 there and a storm forecast for Darwin. Bit of cloud around at the moment, 11 degrees in Hobart, 13 right now in Launceston, mostly cloudy in Devonport and 12. And Kim, not that you've inquired, but I am OK. Um, and thanks for not mentioning what's not allowed to be mentioned. But this time next year, I'll be cheering the Swans Premiership. I like your positivity. Good luck for next year's season. Thanks, Merv. That is all your news for now. We will be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.